This week, we've got some space news to catch up on. We had Astra, we had Firefly, and of course, Starship's Orbital and Inspiration4. We'll talk about all that, but I'm also going to share my thoughts on a technique I've used called work stacking. The good, the bad. Let's talk about it. Welcome, everybody, to Today in Space. I am your space science podcast host, Alex G. Orfanos, and we're back. We're here in September. We had a short August, and uh, to put it shortly, we peeled a little bit too far into the metaphorical onion that is my uh, my, my uh, mental health and physical health. So uh, it was really good to have that vacation, but wow. There, it's it's amazing when you start trying to do some work on you to make yourself better, to improve. Sometimes when you're pulling back that metaphorical onion, you realize, oh, wow, there's a lot more work to be done here. <laughs> but that's that's an ongoing theme here for the podcast. So welcome to the show. We are back here in September. What we wanted to do was do a little bit of a recap of you know our whole theme of August, which was the future of space and and we had two people on that it was it was a great pleasure having both of them on to talk about uh, in Bill Britton's case the cross section of cybersecurity and space and the amazing work that they're doing with the um, CCIC and the the competition that they're doing with CCI and teaching the next generation all the basics of what they need to do to have a career in cyber and space in the future and then of course just how much work needs to be done in the space industry as far as cybersecurity and and all those other things uh, and and it being a skill for the future and then of course we had James Burke of the Mars Society and we got a a great overview of what the Mars Society is and and all the work that James is doing over there to help build up you know him as the director of it mars vr is is kicking off and so that's a great project um to go check out if you haven't already and preparing us for sending humans to mars and just how close all of that really is uh, essentially in a lot of our lifetimes it, it's possible that this we may be seeing human beings go to mars so with a burgeoning space industry exploding on earth and you know, us trying to get to another planet, that's that's only just the beginning. And uh, we'll, we'll talk more about the one of the other aspects I want to talk about for the future of space at the end of this episode. But, but just going back to <laughs> the metaphorical onion that is uh, me working on myself, uh, it's, it's something that I started doing when I really wanted to be honest about what I wanted to go for. In order for me to get to this point where I am now with this podcast... And with AG3D, it took a lot of being honest and saying, okay, what are the things that I'm doing that are getting in the way of me achieving those things? Oh boy, I'm hitting the microphone all over the place. So one of the things that was really important for me early on was when I started this podcast, I wasn't even working necessarily in the science field at that time. Uh, wasn't able to find work, was trying to find work, but uh, went back to school to finish my degree and then really found myself uh, without a, a good option into engineering. But I wanted to stay sharp as a scientist. I wanted to make sure that, you know, all those tools, logics, my scientific tools, my, my math, my engineering, my my thing, my good pattern recognition for, for what it is to be a good scientist I wanted to make sure that I was I was sharp and working on that all the time. So I started looking for jobs that really fit uh, the lifestyle I was trying to do. And I ended up finding 3D printing. And that's where our 3D printing lab, AG3D, came from. And that has started to help fund the podcast today in space, you know. And recently, in this last year, two years, it's really it's really exploded. And it's really allowed us, it's opened us up to a whole lot more possibilities with today in space and of course getting new equipment we know we just picked up a new air compressor for the lab so we can start harnessing air as uh, one of the tools that we can use for um, whether it's media blasting post-processing our parts to make sanding a lot easier and of course there's plenty of tools that we could run purely off of air pressure as well so all of those things are great we have all of our 3d printers that we have running 
most of the time, <laughs> if not all the time. And recently, it has just gotten wild uh, to the point where uh, it has taken us away from this podcast. So right when I was about to take that break, uh, things got really busy with AG3D and uh, just, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the thing that keeps us lights on is AG3D. And, um, you know, we talked about it last episode. When we're not here on the podcast, we are doing... Uh, 3d printing in our lab that's that's really the off time and it we are getting through this and we're, we're again bringing in the, the 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 necessary thing which is money for this podcast to be able to do what it needs to do right uh, for us to be able to go to starship uh to, to starbase down in texas and boca chica to go see all these amazing launches that that's what we're doing so that is ultimately what we've been doing in the background and um it's it's a new tool set that it, it the thing that has allowed me to do all of these different things is a thing called uh, work stacking or at least that's what I'm calling it. Some people call it thin slicing uh, in some ways, but uh, recently it has been taking its toll. So <laughs> so we have not had an episode out in about two weeks. So we want to start off September fresh. I wanted to bring more over to you guys, and later in this episode, I wanted to talk more about work stacking and really what what that is and and where I learned it from uh, hint something someone uh, and some company in the space industry uh, sure if you have a guess who it is but regardless we'll talk about work stacking later in the episode but the whole point of me bringing up the importance of me being a working scientist while I'm also a science communicator other than obviously staying sharp and, and making sure that my skills are on on point it allows me to ask good questions for me to be able to talk about the stuff that I'm really passionate about. And I'm really grateful for everything that uh, being a working scientist and science communicator has, has allowed me to do, right? It's, it's, it's wild. And to be able to talk about the stuff I'm passionate about is uh, <laughs> is amazing. And recently, uh, the thing to look out for this month, no earlier than September 15th, is the launch of Inspiration4 the first all civilian mission in a crew dragon spacecraft in orbit for three days and those four individuals are going to be uh, on a mission like no other a really really unique mission with a brand new cupola that will uh, a clear dome at the top of the crew dragon that was custom installed for this mission to for them to be able to observe everything that they're going to be able to see once they're in space orbiting Earth. The Netflix documentary that's coming out about that is looking amazing, and they're going to cover everything leading up to the launch. What the Inspiration4 team has learned, all their training, it's been amazing, amazing watching them on Instagram and, and online, and then we've been seeing little bits of it here and there following uh, our our crew members as they they make their way to their mission and it's getting so close september 15th is around the corner it's already september 5th as we're recording this it'll probably be september 6th labor day when this comes out but i uh, th that has had such a unique pull in me to the point where it has made me rethink even early on before they even started training uh it has made me rethink the idea that even someone like myself could become an astronaut now that's a whole nother episode in itself and we'll definitely break that down i think there's the the question you've got to ask if if you do want to become an astronaut is is what would you like to do while you're up there and uh i took some time to actually think about that so i want to break that down in an episode if i had a mission what would the mission be if, if, I, if I could choose so uh, obviously it's going to combine all 3d printing and and talking about what's going on there's like i said it's a whole episode so we'll, we'll dive into that 